Hey, what's up? Um, thought I'd go take a walk in the woods. Um, just check out some, this, this uh, hillside here is a south facing hillside. We finally had a few days of snow melt. And I kinda wanted to just see if there were any sheds sticking out anywhere. We still have a pretty fair amount of snow, but these south facing hillsides have somewhat, somewhat melted. So just a quick walk um, up above on the top here. I've got um, a little over an acre of standing corn that has been there all winter. So I know the deer have been feeding in here. There's a lot of trails and stuff. Um, so thought I would just uh, take a walk through here and see what's up. The other thing is I, um, I finally went mirrorless. I've got a Sony a6500. So I'm just doing a little bit of video testing and probably take some photos with it too. Um, just see how things look. So take a walk and see if I can find a couple sheds that might be sticking up. So when I'm shed hunting, especially this time of year where there's still a little bit of snow left, I like to find the trails and they're probably pretty easy to find if you've had good snowpack because as you can see here, this trail running through is pretty much hard pressed ice. It's packed down where those deer have been just using that same trail over and over um, all winter. Fortunately and unfortunately for me in this woods on this hillside, there are so many trails because that food is right there above and this is a bedding area. Um, so it's a lot of trails to walk, but that's definitely a place that as you go look for sheds that you're gonna wanna stay on those ice packed trails that those deer have walked back and forth all winter long. When one other trip, <laughs> trip one other trick that i like to employ when shed hunting is when you are on these long trails um use your optics i don't have them with me today but you know have your binoculars if you can see a long ways down a trail it's going to save you the walking if you can get out your optics and look a long ways the other place to do that is after the snow is gone on those you know picked bean fields especially alfalfa fields where sometimes you're going to see those tines sticking up out of the out of the grass or out of the bean stubble it's a great way to do things so one other place um, to look is if you're walking these woods or any woods off of your food source is to find areas where they've been bedding. Obviously during these tough winter months it's about survival for them so it's about bedding and food and if you can find the place in between um, where those deer are moving you're uh, inevitably going to hopefully find some of the sheds and hopefully some of them off the, the, the bucks that you're going to want to hunt next year. One other thing that I like to do during this time is just make mental notes about where trails are moving um, in relation to the terrain, um, where trails intersect, where they fork. Um, a lot of these trails, though right now, they are consumed with just getting to food and getting to bedding. A lot of those trails end up being habitually the same ones that they're gonna use during the fall. So I definitely make mental notes of, uh, you know, where those trails are um, right here kind of as I go down into this little gully, I see a spot where, where two main trails fork behind me. And um, I do have a tree stand right up here, um, you know, right up above where I'm walking right now. And it's something that I'll definitely want to pay attention to come fall, that those deer are probably going to be using some of these same trails. So the other obvious spot is right in the food. Um, to look here is, is great. Obviously, they're going to spend a lot of time in there. Um, right now, the snow has drifted so much in this corn that it's gonna anything that was down earlier in the year is gonna be is gonna be long gone. But um, later in the spring, as the snow entirely disappears, um, standing corn, bean stubble, all those things are great places to look. Just like during the season, sometimes you are looking for the smallest fraction of an antler, anything that represents it. And obviously, when you're looking through a standing corn field or in tall, thick grass or brush. It's tough, but it kind of trains your eye, much like it does in the fall, to look for anything that might stick out just like an antler. One other tip that I like to do, I do like to shed hunt when there is a little bit of snow because of that exact reason right there. Sometimes you end up wandering around the woods a lot and sometimes it's hard to remember if there's a lot of trails, which ones you've been on, which ones you haven't. And when you are out with just a little bit of snow left, you can find your own boot tracks and um, not have to walk things twice. So that's a few tips from out in the woods. Um, as I wrap things up and another blizzard was coming in, um, it made me realize that there are a couple, a couple last little tips that I would share with you that I didn't get a chance to share. I know I said that I like to, sh I like to shed hunt when there's a little bit of snow left. If you can get out on a kind of an overcast cloudy day with a dark forest floor or a dark field, um, some of those sheds show up whole lot better. The sun creates a lot of harsh shadows and, and 
bright highlights and a lot of contrast. So on some of those really dull lit days where the, the sun is not shining, um, sheds, especially some of those bleached ones that have been in the sun, they just glow. Another tip um, that I didn't get a chance to share would be checking fence lines, uh, ditch crossings, even uh, a fallen tree or a fallen log that is going across a trail. Any place that deer will have to jump or leap or have a little bit of a bound, even in the snow, a lot of times the force of them hitting the ground or taking off will be just enough to knock an antler off. So, so as far as the camera goes, um, I didn't go and invest in a full frame mirrorless yet. Um, a lot of money just to kind of test things out and see how I liked it. But um, what I can tell you about this um, Sony a6500, for the small little camera that it is and pretty affordable uh, price range, super powerhouse of a camera. I love the fact that it, um, it shoots 4K at 60 frames a second. It'll shoot um, 1080 at 120 frames a second, so some really awesome um, slow motion capabilities. I'm pretty impressed so far. I haven't taken a lot of still photos with it, but 24 or so megapixels. So really with a half a day shooting, um, the thing that I love the most about it is just the size. Um, I will continue to shoot um, my Canon full DSLRs with, with big glass and grips and everything else, but a whole day in the field um, with those and they get heavy and to, to be able to grab something that's literally the size of the palm of your hand that still has the the capabilities that these do um, I thought it was worth checking out so I'll get a, a little bit more of an in-depth review but I can show you a few of the images that were taken with this camera um, just today um, the video that you're watching other than this shot right here was all shot on this camera in 4k uh, pretty happy with it so far and um, We'll see down the road, I'll share some more of it. As the blizzard was coming in, um, right at the end of the day, I did happen to find uh, one shed, kind of one of the last trails that I was gonna walk. Hopefully as the snow starts to melt, I'll be able to get a chance to get out and um, find some more, and I, I hope the same for you. So, there's a few tips for shed hunting. Uh, looks like the way the weather's going that I probably won't be back out now for another few days until some more of this melts. But, thanks for joining me today.